Good morning. I'm Kevin Marshall, Frank Lazarga, Endowed Dean of the College of Law. Welcome to the University of Laverne's 2020 Virtual Commencement Ceremony, celebrating our spring 2020 graduates from the College of Law. We acknowledge our 129th year as an institution, and we thank you for joining us today virtually from the Sheraton Fairplex Conference Center. Our ceremony is being live streamed all over the world to family, friends, faculty of our graduates. Welcome to you all. I am thrilled today to announce that 76 candidates were approved for degrees from the spring 2020 class. We gather today as a community to honor and celebrate the accomplishments of all our graduates. Please join me in welcoming our distinguished stage participants, our president, Devorah Lieberman, and our provost, Dr. Jonathan Reed, and our esteemed keynote speaker, David Goldstein. Joining over 87,000 alumni, proudly we present our Juris Doctorate candidates from the College of Law at the University of Laverne's 2021 Virtual Commencement Ceremony. Candidates, or graduates, please allow me to take a moment and remind you that you have chosen a sacred and honorable profession, charged with a sacred responsibility of guarding over and securing the self-evident truth that our founding mothers and fathers proclaimed to the world, we are indeed all created equal. That we are endowed by our creator with the rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You, now, more than ever, are the guardians of these rights. This is the work we do as lawyers. It is important, it is relevant, and it is profound. And in this way, you will soon have the opportunity to become the next civic and constitutional superheroes with the skills and powers to actively engage in securing for us all a just and life-giving existence. And you could not have completed this juncture of your journey, however, without the guidance of your faculty, College of Law, administrators, and staff, to whom many are present today sharing in this celebration. They shared their wisdom with you, they cared for you, they pushed you, they guided you, and they advised you. And I know now they are genuinely pleased for you and excited to see you thrive and flourish in the practice of law. Thank you all, College of Law community. It is now my pleasure to introduce the invocation video presented by Reverend Zandra Wagner, University Chaplain. I invite you to join me in blessing this special occasion. Many of our wisdom traditions use the metaphor of light to name this inner holiness that each of us carries inside. According to Kabbalistic Judaism, each of us carries the trace of divine light in us, and it's our responsibility to bring our pieces of light together for healing and wholeness. The great Muslim Sufi poet Rumi says, don't you know yet? It is your light that lights this world. Or as Buddha instructed, make of yourself a light. And as Jesus said, let your light shine before others. Today, graduates, we are celebrating your light, your inner light that has persevered and struggled and accomplished so much. Today is about affirming and celebrating your unique light in this world. There is brilliance inside of you, and we need your light to shine at its best. Remember that you are a light of immeasurable worth. Remember that you are a light of compassion and justice with and for this world. Remember that you are a light of courage and strength and dignity. And remember that you are a light of 
peace, and goodwill. May it be so. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Shalom. Vayamos in paz. Go in peace. Amen. Good morning. I'm Provost Jonathan Reed, and it is my pleasure to introduce our trustee welcome video presented by board member Frank Lizarraga with a special message on behalf of the university's board of trustees. To President Devorah Lieberman, to the first endowed dean of the University of Laverne, Dean Kevin Marshall, to our distinguished faculty, honored graduates, and family members, good morning and thank you for including me in this wonderful day of celebration. I am honored to be here, albeit remotely by way of a recorded speech. My name is Frank Lazariga. I am privileged to be a member of the University of Laverne's Board of Trustees. I am also the chairman of the Board of Advisors to the University of Laverne's College of Law. I have been a practicing lawyer for over 30 years, and I attribute all of my accomplishments due to the fact that I am an alum of the University of Laverne. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, the Board of Advisors, the faculty, its administration and staff, it gives me great pleasure in welcoming you all to this very important occasion. Now I know that not everyone receiving a degree today will have a career as a lawyer. Some will find themselves drawn to the business world. Others will devote themselves to education or philanthropy or the arts. The possibilities are endless, but the education you've acquired at this College of Law will help you excel in any field at any profession. Whether you head for a large law firm or become a public servant, whether you hang out your own shingle, head into business, or start making TV shows, you can forge a path of your own making. Soon, many of you will be taking the California State Bar exam, and after passing this exam on your first attempt, most of you will eventually be sworn in by a judge as members of the California State Bar. And make no mistake, no profession is more honorable or noble than the practice of law. Lawyers are the defenders of the Constitution, the guardians of our liberty, the advocates of just causes, no matter how unpopular, the protectors of the powerless, the wise counselors of our society. That is the role of American lawyers. That is what you've trained to become. Your training at this College of Law will serve you well, but just remember that your ultimate allegiance is to a set of principles, that of civility and ethics, not to the profits or perks of this profession. And remember too, when you are sworn in, the set of principles, ethics, and obligations you accept becomes a part of your life forever. Whether you remain a practicing lawyer or not, for the rest of your days, you and your actions will be judged in this light, in light of your education and your status as a member of this profession. Many years from now, you will be judged not based on your degrees, but on your reputation and legacy. The questions asked will be these. How hard did you fight? How much did you risk? How willingly did you suffer so that others might overcome? And more importantly, what did you give back to the institution that brought you here today and to the community that has given you an opportunity to practice your profession? You have a terrific future ahead of you. Something tells me that this is a generation of new ideas and talent that is about to change the world. Graduation ceremonies are a time for celebration and for giving thanks. I am pleased to thank on your behalf, your family and friends who supported you in this endeavor, as well as the faculty and staff at the College of Law. In a very real sense, your success is their success. There is a good reason they call these graduation ceremonies commencement exercises in that graduation is not the end, it's the beginning. And as we look forward to the rest of these commencement exercises, I will finish my remarks by saying again, congratulations to each and all of you. You made it. It is now my honor to invite to the podium, Dr. Devorah Lieberman, 
a nationally known leader and educator. She is the 18th president of the University of Laverne, who will preside over today's ceremony. Thank you, Provost Reed, and to all of the graduates, welcome to this morning's commencement ceremony. It is my honor to be with you virtually as we celebrate you, 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 you. You're the most important person in your room today and at the University of Laverne. You are the graduating class of 2020. Today, though virtual, there remains an enormous feeling of joy and pride as we congratulate each of you on your tremendous achievement. Before we get started, I would like to ask that you grab the champagne glass. I don't know if it's full yet, or I'd, it is still pretty early, but somewhere in the world, it's five o'clock, so I don't know what's in your glass that you received in your graduation gift box, but take it out, fill it with your favorite beverage, whatever that is, and we are going to start by toasting you and your accomplishment. So graduates, raise your glasses, let's let the party begin, and let the congratulations flow wide and broad. Graduates, uh, though we're not all in the same physical space today, we are in the same virtual space we are together. We're celebrating you on this special milestone. This day, as Dean Marshall said, also belongs to your loved ones, your family and your friends who have been with you every step of the way. So look around the room where you are in your home or other places and stop for just a minute and join me in thanking everyone who supported you through this journey. Let's stop and say thank you. Today, we also have several other people here who, whether you know it or not, have been instrumental in your success on this journey. Welcome to our Board of Trustees who have graciously joined us virtually, and some right here in the room. Our Board of Trustees are the ones to set the vision for our university. They support us with their time, with their wisdom, and with their treasures. This morning, I would like to spotlight one board member, one beloved board member in particular, Mr. Tony LaFetra. Tony LaFetra was an icon in our community and an exemplar as a leader and as a profound member of our board of trustees. Yesterday, Tony passed away suddenly and left us bereft. Our hearts are feeling a void and an emptiness. Though not a graduate of our university, he joined our board. Why? Because he loved our mission and he loved you, our students. His financial support transformed the University of Laverne. First, he named the La Fetra College of Education. He also endowed a professorship in that same college, and he created a beautiful scholarship fund called the La Fetra Overcomers Scholarship. This scholarship, the La Fetra Overcomers Scholarship, is intended for students who had overcome tremendous obstacles in their way and on their way to the University of Laverne education. Tony's legacy at the University of Laverne will live on for generations and generations. May his memory be a blessing. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Amid our social distancing and safety protocols, let's remember that today is dedicated to congratulating the 76 students 
graduating with the class Spring 2020 from the University of Laverne's College of Law. Yeah! At this time, when our world is steeped in ambiguity and uncertainty, now is the time for all of us to embrace the optimism of our future, a focus on hope, strength, and definitely resilience. There's a quote that I love by Jody Picoult that says, the human capacity for burden, it's like bamboo, far more flexible than you would ever believe at first glance. I ask you graduates, stop and visualize for just a minute a stalk of bamboo. Do you have that bamboo in your mind's eye? We at the University of Laverne community are adapting, adopting, evolving, and bending, just like bamboo, in ways that none of us had ever thought possible. Let's not do this individually and alone. Let's do this together, together as a community. We must each believe in our purpose as individuals, as a university, and as a community. The University of Laverne has embraced the mantra of we are one community. Because we say you cannot quarantine community. We truly are one community. And you are part, an integral part of this community. Please join me in purpose as we believe in something bigger than ourselves, something larger that continues to inspire us to embrace the ambiguity Bend like the bamboo with strength and resilience for our future together as one community. Graduates, you are well equipped to thrive as the University of Laverne graduates joining more than 85,000 alumni. You graduates will continue to be our greatest treasures. The university will forever and ever be an extension of your home. You are Leos for life. Take this time, it is your time. Make every minute count. Think big, accomplish much, and always remember to give back. I have confidence that each one of you has a limitless capacity for positive contributions to the world around us, countless prospects to lead, a productive and fulfilling life. And now, I am so proud to call each one of you esteemed alumni of the University of Laverne, you are Leos for life. Congratulations, class of 2020. Grab those glasses and cheers to you. Congratulations. I'm honored at this time to introduce our commencement speaker this morning. David Goldstein is a prominent attorney with an extensive career in San Bernardino County. He has tried hundreds of criminal, civil, and administrative cases, yet has also found time to participate in local legal clinics seeking to bridge the gap in providing services to those most in need. I'm also happy to refer to him as professor. As you know, he has served as an adjunct professor of law at the University of Laverne since 1989, providing training in legal analysis, criminal law, and trial advocacy. Please join me in welcoming David Goldstein, attorney at law. Congratulations on your degree. Wow, what a fantastic day and what an accomplishment. And it really is. It is a big deal. And when you pass your bar, as many of you already have, and congratulations to you, you will no longer be just an observer. 
You are now a participant. You are in the action. No more will you be forced to deal with hypothetical clients from the county of nowhere who have hypothetical problems with their widgets. What's a widget anyways? But remember, with great skill comes great responsibility. And now, for the real deal. Look, folks, we're not physicians. We don't treat patients. We are advocates who stand up and represent people. No more may you need to sit by and watch as injustice is heaped upon people. You are no longer just an observer. You can stand up and you can represent. But it's not just people who are being the subject of injustice. <clears throat> it is people who have had a loved one die. It is people who have been involved in life-changing accidents. Maybe they got fired from a job, or they got arrested, or they're getting a divorce. Maybe they want to open a business, or unfortunately, are breaking up with a business. Sometimes people just need good advice. And ladies and gentlemen, your accomplishments has allowed you to help all of these people, to help all the people you want, and to choose who you want to help. Because people will come to you for help. And I want you to look them in the eye, and based upon your accomplishments, I want you to help them. You know, people ask me, after all my years of practicing, how is it that you're able to represent individuals who are charged with heinous offenses? And I tell them, the answer to that question is this. Being a lawyer is not just a job. Being a lawyer is not just a business. Being a lawyer is a profession. And we are professionals, ladies and gentlemen. And it's up to you to decide what type of a professional you would like to be. You know, people come to me after all of these years and they ask me for help. And sometimes I'm struck by the enormity of what I'm asked to do. And I ask myself, well, who am I? Who am I to help these people? Again, I'm not a physician. I can't perform surgery. I can't give you medication. But the most important question here today is not who am I? The most important question today is who are you? And who are you going to be as an attorney? We have taught you to think like lawyers. We have taught you to care for people. A care that is limited only by the ethics that govern our conduct as attorneys. Remember, all of us are officers of the court, even if you never step foot in it. We have taught you to help people, which means you need to listen to them. Sure, not everything they say is relevant, but we listen because we care. But we put our lawyer hat on and we pay close attention to, well, what are the relevant facts? We try to determine procedurally, where is this person that we seek to help procedurally? We ask ourselves, what legal issues do they face? And of course, most importantly, what is the law and what is the law that our adversary will embrace? And finally, it helps to tell people what you expect will happen and how you think you can help them. You're going to go out in a little bit and practice law in our legal communities, and you'll all be rookies together, you and all of your classmates. And you'll get to see just how dominant the University of Laverne College of Law is in our local legal community. When you see your classmates and you see attorneys from this institution, you'll be proud and you will know about the impact of this institution in our local legal community. We have taught you to think like lawyers, but the learning is not done. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, the learning has just begun. It is up to you to build a specialized skill set in this specific area of law to which you aspire. This will require more learning. And part of this is to seek out mentors, individuals who are successful in the area of law to which you aspire. They have already learned through experience what you need to know right now. Watch their work habits. Watch the rules by which they live their professional and private lives by and develop your specialized skill set so that people will want you to stand up for them and represent. Be someone that people look to for help. Be gracious in victory, 
But more importantly, learn from your defeats. It is from your defeats that you will learn. We're taught that in the olden days, whenever that was, that individuals who had disputes would literally hire gladiators, people to engage in a physical battle on behalf of them. And of course, no legitimate attorney would suggest something like that today. But what we are suggesting to you is that you are new age gladiators. You are the modern day gladiators who can stand up for people. Your spear and shield are the law, which by the way happens to now be at your fingertips. And with your actions as an attorney, you shall speak. You know, we spent part of this week remembering Kobe Bryant, who passed away a little more than a year ago. And for those of you who are a fan and may recall, he was six foot six and about 210 pounds. And he excelled. There were players that were taller than him. There were players that were stronger than him, bigger, faster. And yet, he managed to excel. And why? Because just like the law, 90% of his excellence and the ability to help people, it's all mental. It requires focus, hard work, and dedication. And that is what separated Kobe Bryant from the rest. And in my world of lawyers, that's what also separates excellent lawyers from everyone else. And those of us on this stage expect you to be excellent lawyers. Remember that as you are helping people, you may come up against bigger or more experienced adversaries. But remember, it isn't the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. Have a big fight in you. Remember also that adaptability, especially now, is the key to success. That's what COVID is teaching us right now in a very humbling fashion to wear a mask, and to learn to try to help people from six feet away. But I guarantee you that from this chaos, when it is over, that what will emerge is great opportunity for all of you. It has been my honor to have been a professor here for 32 years. And I owe thanks to the people on this stage for giving me the ability to do that, along with my co-professor in crime, Jason Anderson, who is the elected district attorney for the county of San Bernardino. I have been very fortunate to be a lawyer in this community for 36 years, to be put in a position of helping, hopefully, helping thousands of people and hopefully helping hundreds of young lawyers to think like lawyers. Congratulations to you all. If there's any questions or objections, I don't hear any. I will see you in court. Congratulations. Thank you. President Lieberman, it is my pleasure and privilege as provost to present to you the candidates who have qualified in all respects for their respective degree program at the University of Laverne. They have been recommended by the faculty and confirmed by the Board of Trustees to be awarded appropriate degrees in recognition of their academic accomplishments. Thank you very much, Provost Reed. With recommendation of the faculty and by virtue of the authority vested in me as president by the Board of Trustees and the State of California, I hereby confer upon each of you the degree for which you have qualified with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. We, all of us, we welcome you graduates to the company of educated persons who are alumni of this fine, fine, fine university, the University of Laverne. <clears throat> this year's student speaker is fulfilling a dream she had since she was a child. 
During law school, she received 13, 13 Cali Awards, served as Editor-in-Chief of the Law Review for the 2019 to 2020 school year, served as Vice Dean of Delta Theta Phi for the 2018-19 school year, and was even published in the University of Laverne Law Review in 2019. She is currently a law clerk for the Department of Justice, and we look forward to seeing where life takes her next. Please welcome Jessica McCauley. First and foremost, I want to say congratulations to the class of 2020. I am so proud of all of us for accomplishing this goal. For some of us, going to law school, graduating, and becoming attorneys has been a goal for many years, maybe since we were kids. For others, maybe it was something we realized later on. Whatever the case may be, graduating law school is a huge accomplishment. We now have the tools to help make a difference in our communities. I still have a hard time believing law school is over. For three years, law school was my life. I missed many family gatherings and trips, instead opting to study. But three years of law school really is life-changing. We learn to think and write like lawyers. And now everyday words have special meaning or significance. For instance, the word negligence. I will forever think duty, breach, causation, damages when I hear that word. But seriously, law school was tough. I remember one all year thinking, what did I get myself into? The hundreds of pages of reading every week was daunting briefing every case so that I could try to look like I knew what I was talking about in case I was called on in class. The late nights writing ILS papers and then the first finals of law school. I remember thinking, wow, three hours for one final. That is such a long time. Come to find out those three hours seemed to pass by in the blink of an eye and I actually felt rushed and like I needed more time. Well, at least at that point, I knew what a law school final felt like. Come to all year, I felt a bit more confident in my ability to handle law school and its workload. The litigation and transactional tracks weren't enjoyable. I mean, who knew trial ad would be so much fun? And before I knew it, I was a 3L. By then, I just felt ready to graduate and begin my legal career. But I wasn't done. Capstone, a class geared at prepping students for bar prep, demanded lots of time and energy. But the finish line was near. And thinking back on it now, those three years really flew by. When we began this journey, no one could have predicted graduation would be like this, or that we would have finished our classes online, or that we would have studied and taken the bar exam from home. Also, suddenly we had worries that we probably never planned for, like whether the store was stocked with toilet paper or if and when we would be lucky enough to find disinfecting wipes. <laughs> but we persevered, we graduated law school, completed what seemed like a never ending bar prep since the bar kept getting postponed and set for the bar exam. We rolled with the punches and I'm happy to finally be able to celebrate even if it is virtually with all of you today. I want to thank the faculty at the College of Law. I had so many excellent professors who really cared about seeing all of their students succeed. I also want to thank all of our families and loved ones for their support during law school. I know for me, I wasn't always the easiest person to deal with. I was often grumpy or tired or both. <laughs> and my family stuck by me through it all. I especially want to thank my parents for always encouraging me to follow my dreams and my husband for being there for me. The legal profession is not extremely large and I'm sure many of us will cross paths during our careers. I look forward to that and I look forward to seeing the many more accomplishments of the University of Laverne College of Law, Class of 2020. This is just the beginning of so many successful legal careers. Celebrate your achievements today. 
Law school is a tough feat and we did it. Again, congrats to all of us. Thank you, Jessica. One of the rewarding traditions at the Laverne Law School is that every year at graduation, the dean gets to award one graduate with the dean's award. The dean's award is an honor awarded to a student of the dean's choice with input from the faculty who has been outstanding in leadership, scholarship, and community service, a true contributor to the betterment of the institution and the legal community. <clears throat> this year's Dean Award recipient graduated from the University of Laverne in 2011. This student joined the law school in 2016. The student is no stranger to academic excellence and throughout this student's residency at the College of Law demonstrated a commitment to both service and professional excellence. This student earned a Cali Award in California real estate practice, an award recognizing the highest performer in the class, as well as this student was awarded the Ann Rahm Endowed Scholarship. Presented to students who had demonstrated outstanding potential as litigators. <clears throat> During this student's time at the law school, as a certified practicing lawyer, this student sought and received both legal and practical experience in both transactional and litigation law. I am informed that while a certified law student under the supervision of a licensed attorney, this student appeared on behalf of clients in over 50 cases. This student also embodies our value of civic and community engagement through giving back to the community through endless hours of pro bono work with legal workshops, clinics, speaking their experience to new students. But this student is also filled with heart. This student is humble, caring, and this student is moved by the needs of others. This student's compassion and steadfast commitment <clears throat> to helping others was ever so demonstrated when the College of Law experienced the tragic loss of one of its students. During this deep and sad time of loss, this student stepped up and helped raise over $30,000 for this student's family <clears throat> and loved ones. <sighs> Relatedly, this student co-founded a scholarship in honor of the passing of his colleague and friend. I'm proud to announce <clears throat> the Christopher Mendez Scholarship exists today through the generosity of this student. And this scholarship's inaugural award was presented this past year for the first time to a raising, rising 2L who demonstrated both passion and commitment to the service of others with regard to the complexities in navigating the challenges of immigration law and its processes. This scholarship to me exemplifies this student's heart and sensibilities. It embodies the core values of the College of Law and the University of Learn. <clears throat> it is my honor and pleasure to announce the winner of the University of Learn's College of Law's Dean's Award for the class of 2020, John Bradford Baldwin. Thank you, Dean Marshall. As I was sitting and listening to you talk about uh, the student who just received the award and what he had done, and I watched you become emotional because of your relationship with the students and what these students are doing and producing, that is the perfect example of a remarkable dean and leader that leads by example so that students produce and accomplish exactly what you described. Thank you, Dean Marshall. And graduates, as you go forth today, I leave you with two pieces of advice that guide me 
every single day in my life. The first is, and you've heard this before from others, but it's a great reminder. People may remember you for what you accomplished. They may, but I can assure you that they will always remember you for how you make them feel. People are special, individuals are special. Recognize the special talents in everybody around you and recognize them for what they bring, their talents, their heart, their heads to our community. And second, as importantly, believe in yourself and your goals. Don't just pick a major, major in a mission that will guide you with purpose for the rest of your lives. And you will trip, you'll fall down, but you are a University of Laverne graduate. You will always get up and you must never, never, never give up on your dreams and your purpose. Always move forward. A tradition at commencement that symbol, that's across, across the country that symbolizes your transition from candidate to graduate to alumni is the moving of the tassel. And at institutions across the country, you move your tassel from the right to the left. At the University of Laverne, we just don't move our tassel from the right to the left. We move our tassel from our head to our heart because the University of Laverne is in our hearts and will be in your hearts forever. So graduates, at this time, in your homes, move your tassel from your head to your heart, and let me be among the first to say to you, alumni, Leos for life, congratulations. The upcoming alma mater video of our choir, led by Dr. Irene Mesolores, concludes our ceremony today. Thank you, graduates. Thank you, faculty, staff, board members, and family and friends for joining us today. Graduates, you are now proud members of our more than 85,000 alumni worldwide. Proudly display your alumni license plate frame that was included in your graduate gift box. There's a tear-papered spot that shall never